Hey there, are you ready for our next riveting experience? Well, buckle up, the fun and excitement is about to begin. All right, let's talk about my UV cure tank here. Now, this isn't very big. You can see that, you know, this is a six inch uh, jerk bait. And it's, uh, I have it, I have it, uh, all the balls relatively close to the lures because I'm going to get a better cure rate that way. Um, but it works perfectly fine. So the lures that I put in here typically take between 30 minutes and an hour to fully cure. Uh, generally speaking, 30 minutes, they're, they're done, but I just give them an extra hour to, to cure. Now, I bought these off of Amazon, and I will link those so that you can, you can uh, get similar units. Um, I bought these with the understanding that they weren't spec'd for the 365 nanometers that were required to, to cure uh, Aluma UV. Um, but... I thought, you know, I think they're going to work anyway. And um, I'll, I'll show a, a bell curve uh, demonstration about why I thought they were going to work. Uh, okay, let's talk about what bulbs you need in order to generate a cure tank. So um, here's a, a typical bell curve, and this is not scientifically accurate. It's just a general idea, understanding, a principle of what the light coming off a bulb kind of looks like um, and this is just so you understand the principle here all right so um, alumalite is looking for uh, 365 nanometers in order to cure that's the ideal wavelength for the uv to cure and some products they they will cure at 370 380 385 all the way up to 400 um, so 365 is what alumalite's looking for now if you were to find a bulb that's pumping out 200 watts of, um, of energy, and it's spec to, to max out at 365, so almost all the energy that that light bulb is, is um, uh, delivering is coming out at that nanometers. That would be fantastic. Your lures are cure in seconds, right? And in some cases, if you're in a production environment, that's what you want is, is seconds for curing. But if you're the hairy homeowner hobbyist, you don't care about that. That's not that important to you. And the bulbs that, that are doing what I just described there, like 200 watts and, and uh, spec at 365, they generally are going to be super expensive. And, the, and they're putting out light uh, that's out here that's in the area that's not really healthy for you, right? The, the further you go to the left on this graph, the more damaging the UV light is to your skin and your eyes and all that good stuff. So um, not as healthy either. So um, most people don't need this bulb, right? This bulb the ones that everybody's oh you got it's got to be spec for 365 those are bulbs that are generally speaking for higher end units now if you're a, a hobbyist and you're wanting to buy the $20 uh, light bulbs from you know some fly by night retailer on Amazon then the, the bell curve is going to be out here somewhere because visible lights right around 400 so you're going to start seeing um, uh, a large portion of that UV light is is close to that visual visual spectrum because what they're after is they want to illuminate uh, phosphorescence and give you that black like look and you know um, a, a party atmosphere so that's what those lights are uh, initially designed for now they're still producing this 365 over here it's just the the amplitude of energy that's coming off those bulbs um, is is uh, not a lot of energy in that wavelength that you need, but it's still producing those wavelengths and it will cure a lure. Uh, it just takes it a lot longer. Um, now, the further you can find a bulb that goes, uh, that's specced for an, uh, nanometers that are closest to your target, obviously the more you're gonna get um, in the target nanometer area. So uh, the ones that I found, I think they were right around 390, 385, something like that was what they were rated for. And so I knew that that was going to produce some 365. It's just, it, it was inevitable. So they were like, uh, I can't remember what they were. They were like 20 bucks a piece, I think. And I bought four of them. And um, there was a bit of apprehension on my part because I was guessing at the time when I bought these, I just assumed that they would produce enough of the UV that I needed in order to cure my lures. And it turns out that my lures will cure in about 30 minutes. 
Um, I leave them in there for about an hour just because why not? It, it, to make sure that they're fully cured, um, I can do that. Now, if I wanted to pull them out in 30 minutes um, and go fishing in the daylight, they're going to continue to cure because there's, uh, there's that uh, same UV as in daylight as well. But I thought 30 minutes to an hour is perfectly acceptable for what I'm trying to do. And the, the wattage on them was enough that it allowed it to cure in that time frame. Now, if you bought ones like a flashlight, if it's not in the right um, output uh, nanometers, then the, your, your bell curve is going to look more like this. It's, if it's a low amplitude, it's going to give you very little, uh, very little light uh, unless it's at the exact target area that you want. So um, ideally what you're looking to do is find a bulb that is in your budget in your price range that is closest to your target uv and you want the bulb to be as high energy as you can those are the that's the criteria you're looking for right the higher the energy of the bulb the more efficiently it will cure your resin and the closer you are to your target the faster the uv light will cure um so the don't get freaked out by people on the forums who say, oh, you need to make sure that your bulb is pumping out, you know, the, the, the correct uh, wavelength or else your UV won't cure. In almost all cases, those bulbs that you buy that are, you know, UV bulbs will have enough wavelengths to cure your lures. It's just going to take them a little bit longer. All right, so I hope that helps you with your anxiety about buying bulbs and setting up a UV tank. It's really not that hard. It's really quite simple. When I bought these units, they didn't have any mounting holes in them. So I had to actually drill out these holes and it was a little bit nerve wracking because there is glass on the inside and I didn't want to hit that glass because as soon as the drill bit hit the glass, it was going to crack it. Um, but I was able to get through all of them without cracking any glass. I just took my time and it worked out fine. Uh, these do produce a bit of heat, which means that some of the energy that they're consuming is being converted to heat versus light but they are LEDs, so they're relatively efficient in that, in that aspect. The way that, once I uh, drilled these four holes, uh, I just mounted those to, you can see there's an L angle in here, and I think this is like three quarter inch um, aluminum L angle, and I just bolted each one of those to that. Now that gave me a frame, and then from that frame, I, I just mounted a couple of pieces of aluminum in the, in the gaps, and uh, also put one in the bottom down there, um, just to just to give it some rigidity and hold it in place and also to keep the light in there I didn't want to be uh, having all that UV light floating around my my shop when I'm trying to work so uh, completely contained and then you know I use a really sophisticated uh, uh, closing system there's a super crappy hinge on the top that I just flop that down and uh, we're all done um, so not, it really isn't anything to this. You could do this with a cardboard box, honestly. You could cut it out and just uh, duct tape it in place. It, I would be a little concerned about the heat and duct tape over time, but, uh, you know, just to get started on it, that's all you really needed to do. And I used aluminum because it dissipated the, the bit of heat that these guys do produce over a period of an hour, and uh, it seems to work great. Um, I have some wires across the top here that, oh, that's nice. I just went down in there. <laughs> I'll dig that out in a second. Um, the, I put the wires across the top and I just dangled the lures down there. And so they're sitting right in front of the lights when they're curing. Um, I think the closer you are to the lights, the more likely you are to get a good cure. So that's what I do. All right. So all told my costs on this, I, it was like, uh, let's say these were 20 bucks a piece. I think they were actually two for 35. So, um, so that would have given me $70 in lights and all the aluminum that I had was just scrap I had laying around. So, uh, throw in an extra 10 bucks for hardware and for, um, certainly less than a hundred dollars, I have a fully functional UV cure tank and you know a little bit of labor and um cursing i i was able to get that that guy uh done up all right so that's really all there is to creating a, a uv cure tank it's just getting some bulbs and putting them in a, a orientation that would shine the light on your lure now let's talk about um my brush i built this about five years ago and um I've used the same brush 
<laughs> since when I built this. Um, and so what I did was I have a, some PVC pipe, and I don't know what this was. It came off of something from my, I don't know, I found that in a scrap bin. I don't know what that is. But, you know, obviously a piece of wood or a cap of any kind stuck to the bottom of a piece of PVC pipe would uh, would suffice. Uh, and then in here I have a, uh, um, a little piece of wood with a hole in it. And so when I stick my... I uh, brush in there, it holds it square and tight. And then I have a piece of uh, aluminum tubing with a cap on it. And when I slide that over there, it keeps it in the dark 100% completely. And that will last literally years. And because the UV resin won't cure in the dark, I don't have to worry about cleaning that brush. I just put it in this, uh, this encapsulated dark area and um, it will literally last me for years. So uh, don't go through brushes, just make sure you, you cover them up and just wrapping them in tin foil is really all you need to do. But uh, since I do this enough, I thought, well, I'll make a little case to put, the, put my brush in um, so that I'm ready for the next time I have a lure that needs to be uh, clear coated. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them in the the section down below and I'll answer the questions. Please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by.